I mean, ExxonMobil likes the UN Paris Agreement. All the oil companies support it. They support carbon taxes. Donald Trump's first pick at Secretary of State was Rex Tillerson, an absolute disaster. One of the first things he did was that go. That didn't make any sense, Made by the way. no sense. Yeah. He goes to the Arctic and signs on some UN climate agreement. Why do you agreement. say Rex Tillerson made no sense? Do you know who he is? He's big oil. CEO, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. how do you, that didn't make any sense. But he wasn't even, it wasn't like yeah. climate skeptics were like, oh, he's great. He was horrible. The ExxonMobil, they will have nothing to do with anyone. They would never give to us because they don't support our agenda. At this point, big corporations support the woke agenda. 20 years ago, they were all, 30, 20, 30 years ago, the left hated big corporations. Now, big corporations quake in the boots of the left and the progressives, and they love them now. So they're not with us anymore. And anyone who claims that all oh, these climate denial groups are fossil fuels. So explain that. It's not- very important what you just said. So t- t- tell, tell us why. Why would Exxon Mobil, uh, why would the left or Exxon Mobil support the left? That doesn't make any sense because what they're saying, the Green New Deal is there's no way in, in any shape or form does a Green New Deal help an Exxon Mobil's business model. Well, it, yes and no. The more solar and wind we do, the more backup you need for fossil fuels, and it's who controls it. There were reports years ago of Soros you know, groups buying a lot of the old coal plants that were going out. Uh, are buying them and buying fossil fuels to have them for backups because what's going to happen here is ExxonMobil has the best lawyers, has the best lobbyists. They can control the agenda. So they don't, they're do not they not afraid of massive increases in regulation, massive government control because they partially control the government. It's hard to tell in today's world whether government is taking over corporations or corporations are controlling the government, especially when you're talking big pharma or you're talking you know, now you know, even big oil or um, and a whole range of these issues. And then you get into things you know, with uh, environment, social governance, the Chinese style credit scores of all these companies where the boards are infiltrated, just like school boards were with, you know, parents found that out. It's the same thing with these corporate boards. So that's one of the pressures they have. They want to look green to the media, and they also know that they can handle it. It crushes the smaller competition. Biggest success for American energy, we led the world in CO2 reductions because of fracking. Initially, it was a lot of smaller fracking operations. In recent years, there's been consolidation and taking over. What's happening, and it's the same with, you know, when a lockdown happens, what happens? Small mom and pop restaurants get crushed. That's a government designed, you know, uh, planned recession, and they've, they've called for that to fight climate change. So that's why big corporations support government intrusion. It gets rid of the small competitors, it allows consolidation, causes bankruptcy. They can go in, buy up toxic assets. Why do you think BlackRock loves uh, economic chaos? Because they can then buy real estate. Why does Bill Gates love farmers having difficulty? Bill Gates is now the single largest farm owner in America. So it's a consolidation, and all of these government policies support that consolidation. And the ultimate one was climate. I notice I'm talking past tense. Climate, in fact, I lead a chapter in my new book with a quote from Richard Lindzen saying, it's hard to imagine a better leverage point for the control of society than carbon dioxide. Humans exhale carbon dioxide. It's involved in everything from plastic to all aspects of our life to human energy, economic development, long life, um, and human health. But they imagined it, and that was a virus scare, and that's what they ended up doing. So that's how that happened. But essentially, big business loves uh, big government at this point, and that's why ExxonMobil would never support the, your average climate skeptic. Now, there might be some, you know, Climate skeptics out there who you know who who are, who are lobbyists or something like that, but that's not in my world. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.